All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. It's been a long time. Uh, we're going to begin our study of the conic sections, which is the entirety of chapter eight. Uh, for the most part, actually, there's one little section that we're going to do that's not conic sections. It's going to take us back a little bit. Um, but what I want to do is get uh, these conic sections kind of instilled into our brain before spring break so we can come back and we continue using them and um, dive even deeper into the conic sections themselves. So the first of the conic sections that we're going to be dealing with is the parabola and we're just going to be looking at the equation, the standard form, uh, different ideas about the parabola that you didn't know about beforehand. So this idea of what's called a conic section is the fact that there's six of them. You actually have, if you had two right circular cones, and a right circular cone is just, oops, um, just basically exactly what you think of when you hear the word cone. It's a circular base and the cone looking like this. But if you had two circular cones that were identical, one on top of the other, kind of like that. That's about the best as I can do. And then if you were to slice this thing in different ways, you could get different shapes. And there are the three standard conic sections that we're going to be dealing with are the parabola, the ellipse, and the hyperbola. Now, I do have a physical representation of this uh, in my classroom, so you guys can always take a look. I'll have it out uh, hopefully tomorrow, if I remember. Basically, if you were to take for your parabola, if you were to slice this, para this cone parallel to this line right here, or parallel to this line, you would get a parabola, and you can see that on my uh, wood model. And then if you were to slice it just at an angle here, where you're only cutting through the red one, you'd get an ellipse. If you cut it vertically along the edge here, you'd get a hyperbola. You might be thinking about what that would look like. Um, if you cut it parallel to the base, you would just get a circle. If you cut it right on the edge, you would get a line. And if you cut it through the center, you get a dot. And that's what we call our three... Um, one, I've heard it called this. I, I don't know exactly why, but we call them degenerate conic sections because they're not really shapes that, that are interesting to us, like lines or two lines intersecting or the point. They're not really interesting. I will discuss the circle in a little bit, in a little bit of context later, um, but right now we're going to focus mostly on, or fully on the parabola. So this is a definition you've never seen, you might have never seen before, but a parabola is actually a set of all points in a plane equidistant from a particular line, which we call the directrix, and a particular point, which we call the focus in a plane. Now, you're used to seeing that, hey, y equals x squared is a parabola, and I know I can plug in points and create the graph. But there's different definitions to this, and this is the one that we're going to be using today. Um, so we have the vertex on our function here somewhere. So we got our picture. We have our vertex. That's normal. We know how to do that. But the di idea here is the vertex is halfway between our focus and this line we call the directrix. So this distance and this distance are the same. And we're going to use the value P uh, for no reason other than that's the textbook's uh, letter that they use. And what I want to show you is what this definition really kind of looks like in a um, <coughs> physical representation. So what you can kind of look at here is this is a parabola. And if I was to change this point on the parabola, what you'll see is the distance between that focal point 
and the directrix stays the same, or the distance here on the red and the blue lines. That distance stays the same, doesn't matter where I put this point on the parabola. And that's actually kind of a, a cool definition that we've never seen before. And if I was to change, this is a GeoGebra, by the way, um, that I'm using. This just changes the up of the vertex, the left, right of the vertex. But if I change the A value, right, this is in vertex form. If I change the A value, you can see that even though I'm stretching the parabola, the distance, distances still stay the same to that x sub 0 point here. Now we can move that around. Now this isn't anything trickery. It's not like somebody created some sort of idea here. But this is just one of our definitions. So let's go back to this. And we'll look at what this is going to do. All right, so if you were to have a parabola with a vertex h, K. So you have to remember that y equals, sorry about the phone there, if you were to have y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. That's vertex form, that's our standard idea, and we know that the vertex is hk. Now, this is not going to look like what you normally think it's going to look like, though, because we don't, in this particular form, we don't write it as y equals the piece with the quadratic with like the a and the k over here. We actually get the quadratic by itself. So rather than thinking y equals x squared, we actually think that x squared is equal to y. And there's reasons for this, and, and you'll see in just a minute. All right, so the equation for the first part, this is a three-column um, uh, table here, by the way. So you're going to have a column there and a column there, just as an FYI. So the equation here is x squared, or sorry, x minus h squared is equal to 4p times y minus k. And you'll notice I used the value p earlier as the distance to the focal point from the vertex. Now, because this is an x squared version, that's our normal thought, so our normal ideas there. Um, so this is going to be a parabola that opens up or down. And that depends on basically this thing here. If this is positive, then it opens up. And if this is negative, it opens down. Right. So if I was to just give you something like this, x minus 2 squared equals... Uh, negative 3 times y minus 7. This is a parabola that opens down because this is negative. The focal point is measured p units up or down from the vertex. So that's what this point represents. This is very key that you understand what this means. It means take your vertex, which is hk, and move it up p units or down p units, depending on if it opens up or down. If the parabola opens down, the focus is down from the vertex. If the ver uh, quadratic opens up, then it's up from the vertex. So I'm going to note this one more time. This point, don't get too stuck on this hk plus p thing. It's just p units up or down from the vertex. The directrix is in the opposite direction. So the directrix being a horizontal line is the value of our k from our vertex and in the opposite direction of the focus. I don't get too bogged down on what exactly this is, more just the idea of what this says. The axis of symmetry, that one's easy. That's just the vertical line at the x-coordinate of our vertex. This I've mentioned already, the focal length, meaning the distance from vertex to focus, is p units. That's the focal length. 
And the focal width is the absolute value of 4p. And the focal width is kind of interesting. We don't do it a whole lot. But the focal width, if that's your focus point, the focal width is the distance that is parallel, by the way, parallel to the directrix that goes through the focal point. So the width here in this blue line is the absolute value 4p. It's a, it's a length, so it's absolute value. All right, so this is the opens up or down version. What you might guess is next is the opens uh, left or right because we can have parabolas that open left or right. And all we have to change there is that instead of having the x squared, we have the y piece squared. And again, we keep the quadratic by itself and the linear piece by itself. And this particular case, they open left or right. And again, that depends on this value here. If we want it to open left, it's going to be negative, and if we want it to open right, it's going to be positive. I should do that over here. If it opens up, it's positive. If it opens down, it's negative. And I'm talking about this piece here, the 4p. Then the focal point is left or right from the vertex, and that's what this represents because we're changing the x-coordinate. The directrix is a vertical line now, so it's x equals. The axis of symmetry is now the y equals, a horizontal line. And the last two things are the same because the focal length is still p units and the focal width is still 4p units long. So make sure you have this. And what I want to mention here is Rather than doing this table multiple times, I generalize everything with the vertex of HK. But if my vertex is 0, 0, you still need to know that still works. If the vertex is 0, 0, then obviously H is 0 and K is 0, and it, it shrinks the problem a little bit to an X squared equals 4P times Y, or Y squared equals 4P times X. All right, so you do have to understand that, that this obviously is the same thing for the vertex of 0, 0. All right, so let's get into looking at how this is going to work. So I want to find the vertex, the focus, the directrix, and the focal width of this particular parabola. So this parabola is written in the standard form, kind of the way that we write it in Algebra 2, the beginning of the year, this year. But what I want to do is I want to write it in chapter 8 form. I think the book calls it standard form, but it's kind of like this new standard form for us. So we want to get the x squared by itself. Now in order to get x squared by itself, I just have to multiply both sides by negative 2. So I have negative 2y. Now, I should know, before I even did all this, this to this, I should know that this parabola opens down and the vertex is at 0, 0. You should know that. So my vertex is at the point 0, 0. That's easy. Now I need to figure out my focal point. Well, my focal point comes from knowing how big, how long P is. Oops. How big is P? Well, we know that the equation on that last table that we just said is negative 2, sorry, we, that's not the right, that's what we're doing right now, is x squared is equal to 4p times y. That means the number that's in front of the y has to be 4p. So therefore, negative 2 is equal to 4p, and therefore p is negative 1 half. That's simple. So what that means is because this opens down, this is going to be one half unit below the vertex. So because it doesn't go left and right, that's still a zero. And it goes down half a unit. So my focal point is at zero comma negative one half. And then my directrix, 
My directrix is pretty easy as well because my directrix is just in the other direction, p units. And so my directrix is up here, and it's a y equals because it's horizontal. So it's y equals, and you need to tell me, is it y equals or x equals? So my directrix is y equals. Since they start at 0, 0, I go up a half unit, so it's y equals 1 half. And then my focal width is 4 times p. Well, 4p was just negative 2. So the absolute value of 4p is equal to the absolute value of negative 2, which is equal to 2. Let's see if we got it all right. Hey, that's what I did before. All right, so we got a ver vertex of 0, 0, a focal point of 0, comma, negative 1 half, directrix of y equals 1 half, and a focal width of Two. All right, so let's try this. Find an equation in standard form from the parabola whose directrix is the line x equals 2 and whose focus is the point negative 2, 0. So what I like to do is I just kind of like to draw these things. x equals 2 is a vertical line right here. And the point negative 2, 0 is right here. And what this is, that's the focal point, so it's not the vertex. But I do know that the vertex is halfway between my focal point and my directrix. And halfway between is the point 0, 0. Which means I can use the stuff from before, but it really just ends up being, oh, uh, and it opens which direction? That's the next question you need to ask, because I didn't look at that beforehand. Um, it can't open up or down because the focal point is over here. So I have to open to the left because the parabola has to, it must go around, uh, the parabola must go around the focal point. And it can't go towards the vertex or the directrix. So that means, it's not an x, that means it's a y squared equals 4p times x because the vertex is 0, 0. So now we need to figure out is we can't leave 4p right here. Well, in this case, how long is the value for p? Well, this is 2 units, and it opens to the left, so it's actually a negative 2. So p is actually a negative 2. We plug in a negative 2, and we get negative 8x. So we get the function that y squared equals negative 8x. Pretty straightforward. Is that what we got last time? That's what I got last time. Okay, so it all comes down to that p value. Notice I sketched the function before I even did anything. That's a key. It's kind of a handy little thing to do. Um, let's see. Do I have one more on this page? I do. Oh, this is all I give you now. Find the equation given a vertex of 3, 4, and a focus of 5, 4. So again, I'm going to sketch the graph. I'm going to go to 3, 4. That's my vertex. And I'm going to go to the point 5, 4 for my focal point. Now, because the vertex has to go, or the quadratic has to go around the focal point, that automatically means my parabola goes this way, which means it has to be y minus k squared equals 4p times x minus h, not squared. Well, what's nice is I can just basically plug in what I know. I know that the k value for my vertex is a 4. My p value is the distance from vertex to focal point, which is 2. So it's 4 times 2, which is 8. And x minus 3, because it's the x coordinate of my vertex. And there you have a kind of a vertex form of your quadratic. Hey, look, it's even what I got last time. All right, let's try something else here. 
Let's put it in standard form and analyze. So the book is going to call this standard form, by the way. This is not standard form, right? As much as you want it to be standard form, it's not standard form. What we need to do is put it into y minus k squared equals 4p times x minus h. That's standard form for us. So you'll notice here I want to get all the y's on one side and everything else on the other. So I get y squared plus 2y, actually let's do it right here, y squared plus 2y equals 6x minus 13. Now, a while back, I emphasized the idea of completing the square for a very good reason. And that good reason is it just has to you have to know it for this particular chapter so what we need to do is we need to complete the square for the quadratic piece so we get y squared plus 2y plus blank and now that we're working with two sides of the equal sign I have to do plus blank on both sides well if I take half of 2 and I square it I get a 1 and I means I have to add 1 to the other side This now factors to y, my, uh, sorry, y plus 1 squared. And now I have 6x minus 12. Now you have to be careful because I can't leave the right side like this. I actually need it to factor out so I know the p value. So I don't care if there's fractions or not. In this case, there's not. You still have to factor out the number in front of x. x has to be with no coefficient here. Now, in this case, there was no fraction, but if this remained a 13, that would just be 13 over 2. Now, let's just, oops, I don't know where the 4 came from. If we were to write this a little bit differently, and we wanted to actually write it as 4p, 4p has to equal the number 6, so therefore p is actually equal to 3 halves if I divide it by Four. So this is actually 4 times 3 halves. And the reason I do that is because now I know p is 3 halves. So if I wanted to analyze this now, I would say my vertex is the point 2, negative 1, because it makes this piece 0 for the x and this piece 0 for the y. My focal point now, you have to understand that this is a parabola that opens to the right. So the parabola opens to the right because this is a positive 6 value here. And since it opens to the right, it's going to change my x coordinate, but not my y coordinate. And I'm going to take that 2 value, and I'm going to add 1.5, or 3 halves, so 2 plus 3 halves is 7 halves. My vertex, my focus, oh, my directrix is an x equals, because it's a vertical line, and it's 2 minus 3 halves, so it's going the other direction. So 2 minus 3 halves is 1 half. And if we wanted to continue that, the uh, what we did earlier, the focal width is 4p. And in this case, 6 was 4p. So my focal width is 6. Is that the same thing I got before? If I got that, that's y plus 1 squared equals 6 times x minus 2. Got that. My vertex is 2, negative 1, opens to the right. Uh, focus is 3.5 comma negative 1 and the directrix is x equals 1 half. All right, so see how it really is not that complicated of a system, but it's still a good thing to know how to do, obviously. Okay, so this problem works exactly the same. I'm going to save us a little bit of time by uh, seeing if you guys should do that and come back with me, back to me, see if you get this. You should get x plus 1 quantity squared equals negative 4 times y minus 2. And you'll notice that the vertex here is negative 1, 2.
This opens down because of the negative 4 value. My focal point is negative 1, 1, and my directrix is y equals 3. What I really like about these conic sections, this is some of the coolest things to me, or these are some of the coolest things to me, is their, it's their reflective properties. These have really, really cool reflective properties. And I don't care if you're snickering at me right now. I know you do it. Every time I say something's cool, I know you snicker. All right, so the reflective property, and this is for light and sound, anything that travels as a wave. Say, okay, so you physics people, you know that light and sound both travel as waves, and they like to reflect off of things. You know that because you've heard echoes. Okay, you're standing out in the quad at school and you yell really loud, it echoes off the walls, but it doesn't echo in a very good way because you're, you're reflecting off of flat walls. Now, with these reflective properties, um, you've probably seen some sort of um, satellite dish or just any type of satellite dish. This satellite dish that sits on top of people's roofs. They go like this, and then there's this little receiver right there. That, that satellite dish is actually what we call a paraboloid for the most part. It should be a paraboloid. And... What you're basically doing is you're taking a parabola and around some axis on that vertex, that axis of symmetry, you're rotating it. And when you rotate it, you would actually get a solid. And that solid was what we call a paraboloid. And this is in flashlights, your headlights that you actually use. They don't, I don't think they use uh, paraboloids, but they use something like it. And one of my favorites is the parabolic microphone. If you've ever seen any of those um, little kids spy gadgets, they're basically paraboloids with a little microphone in them um, with a little handle over here so you can use it and headphones that come out so you can listen to people's conversations from a long way away. And if you've ever watched sports, ideally football, which I know not everybody has, but you may have seen this guy standing on the sidelines. And he's got this big piece of plastic and some gear, and he just looks kind of weird. But if you watched football on TV, you would never hear some of those um, collisions that you hear on the field. You would never hear the guys yelling because they don't actually have microphones on. This guy is standing on the sideline and he's pointing his parabolic microphone in just the right direction. And what happens is the sound comes in and it hits the microphone or it hits the plastic and it bounces directly back to the focal point. Well, guess what's at the focal point? That microphone. Okay? And it doesn't matter where the sound comes in, it could come in right here. As long as it hits the parabola, it's going to bounce back to the microphone. It comes in really close. It bounces and comes back to the microphone. So it's kind of cool. You have some sort of parabola. You have your focal point. Light or sound or anything comes in. It hits that parabola. And the thing is, is it bounces directly back to the focal point. And it actually works in the other direction as well. This is for the idea of flashlights and headlights. If your light bulb is at the focal point, it sends out light and the light hits the reflective surface and it bounces straight out in this manner. So you always get a straight beam coming out of your flashlight or headlight. And that's why everything can focus really well. All right, so this is kind of cool, and there's different things we can do. This is So here's our definition. Waves that travel parallel to the focal axis toward the paraboloid will reflect directly to the focus and vice versa. So it'll go in the opposite direction. That's what I was just talking about. Okay, so it's very key that this microphone is not out here somewhere because it wouldn't get good sound. And the same thing, if your light bulb was off just a little bit, you wouldn't get good light. 
So there are ways that we can do this mathematically. So if you have a parabolic reflector that's three feet across and one foot deep, what we would actually do is we would do this graphically. We would just set this parabola up with a vertex at 0, 0. And we would say, since this is three feet across, I know that this is 1.5 and this is negative 1.5, and this is a height of 1, which means this is the point 1.5 comma 1. And we can do a lot of math with this. We can say, oh, my vertex is 0, 0. If we want to figure out where is my focal point in here, we just do a little bit of math. If you follow along here, I'm going to erase this picture you should have somewhere. Our parabola opens up vertex of 0, 0. So we have this basic x squared equals 4p times y. We can put those points on that parabola, and then we can just use those points to help solve. If we were to plug it in to solve for p, the x value, plug that in and plug in the y value, we could say that 2.25 equals 4p, and therefore p is 0.5625 feet right? Because we're dealing with feet up here in the problem. And if we wanted to change that to inches, we'd multiply by 12 and we get 6.75 inches. So we know that that microphone would have to be placed exactly six and three quarter inches from the vertex. All right, so that is where I'm going to leave off. I have our assignment, which will probably change just a little bit for the morning. Um, but you can at least start on some of that. Actually, that's not too bad. That's 15 problems. I think that's actually what I want us to do, so it might not change. But I hope you guys have a good evening. I will see you guys tomorrow.